Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome again to Legends of Chess 2020, this time round 6. And I choose the game, the only decisive game between Ding Liren and Magnus Carlsen. Ding Liren, number 1 in China, number 3 in the world and his rapid time control ranking is 2836 and he's gonna play as black and his opponent Magnus Carlsen gonna play of course as white. Uh, Magnus is triple world champion in the blitz, in rapid time control and of course in the standard time control as well and his rapid time control ranking is 2881. So without further ado let's see what happened on the board as this is a very, very educational and very interesting game. Magnus open with d4. We have uh, not the bishop, but we have knight on f6, we have c4, we have e6, knight on f3 and now d5. So queen's gambit declined. Pretty standard stuff. Knight on c3 and now c6. Semislav defense. Bishop on g5, the main line. h6, kicking bishop and what to play as white. There are actually two choices, maybe f maybe three, uh, because bishop also could retreat to f4. However, the main line is the Moscow variation uh, with the bishop on f6. It's the very positional continuation, because after queen on f6, the game is quite slow, e3, knight on d7, and after bishop on d3, black winning the tempo here, so d takes on c4, bishop on c4, and now bishop on d6 is the possibility, however the ma main line is g6. And after castle, a bishop on g7, e4. So as you see, this bishop makes, you know, uh, two moves, this pawn makes two moves. It's a pretty slow, very, very positional. Uh, so black usually play e5, d5 and the game can continue. So that's the Moscow variation. However, Magnus goes for a very sharp anti-Moscow variation and actually it's, uh, it's the gambit. So anti-Moscow gambit uh, and he played bishop on h4, sacrificing the pawn on c4, which actually can be defended uh, by black. It doesn't happen often, but in the anti-Moscow variation it's possible. So we have d takes on c4, we have e4, as you see, uh, for the pawn, for the price of the pawn, white gonna have very fast, you know, control the center. However, as I said, after g5, because e5 can be very unpleasant, so after g5, bishop on g3, black actually can defend the, the c4 pawn. And of course, this has been played plenty of times and it's very well known position. So bishop on e2, now we have bishop on b7 and now castle and knight b on d7. And it looks pretty uh, solid for both sides, especially for black, which, you know, won the, the extra pawn, so should be happy. From the other hand, of course, white has this center and some possibilities to, um, to continue the attack. The main line here is actually knight on e5. Something has to be done with this knight. Uh, it can be attacked pretty easily. So the one of the ideas is to, is actually the main idea, is to exchange uh, this knight for this knight. Uh, which doesn't look so attractive. However, after bishop on g7, knight on d7, knight on d7, uh, bishop on d6 can be pretty annoying. Um, controlling the, the f8 so black cannot castle and after a6 white usually attacks this pawn structure with a4 um, so for example b4 bishop on b4 queen on b6 uh, and black can win um, back the central pawn this way so bishop on a3 uh, queen on d4 and believe me or not this position was reached couple of hundred times and 95 percent of the games ended in the draw so it's extremely you know difficult to to win this position black actually has this very ugly pawns but this you know one extra pawn and this pawn on b2 is a is a little bit you know backward this bishop is a pretty active here so it doesn't look you know so attractive for white as as you think so th this is a very very drawish position uh, however, Magnus goes for something else, knight on d2, with a very simple, very known idea. Uh, white actually want to push the pawn to e5, uh, king, kick this knight and bring the knight to the game uh, to e4. So instead of actually jumping, exchanging the knights, the idea is to bring this knight to the game uh, and from there the knight actually can control a couple of squares. 
Uh, we have queen on b6. Of course, this idea is also known. However, it's uh, very rare. Uh, and here a4 in the spirit of the opening. So now um, a6, uh, of course, uh, queen on d4 doesn't work because of a takes on b4. And as you see, if uh, black decide to take it, this knight can be very dangerous on c7 with the support of the, of the bishop that's uh, very bad. So a6 was played by Ding Liren and now we have e5 as planned. Knight on d5 and now knight on d on e4. So as you see this knight uh, in the future maybe can jump on some of these squares. For now all of them are controlled by the black but in the future you know why not. And here is very interesting moment of the game because for some reason Ding Liren didn't go for the main idea and very safe and very attractive actually for black. Uh, what he could play and he didn't, uh, but he is the expert in the Slav defense and in semi-Slav defense. He could go for the castle and it looks not only pretty solid but also very dangerous for white. Because what to play now after queen on d2? B4, B4, this is the sideline, however, if you check the statistics, um, we have 13 games, 6 of them were won by black and only 7 were drawn, very attractive variation and it's very, very dangerous. Uh, so this knight can retreat and already the position is uh, very passive or here or here, it looks just bad. Uh, and if white decide actually to play knight on d5, then this knight has the problem to find the spot. So after let's say a5, um, the, the queen can uh, move to b5, this knight has to do something. So uh, knight on d6 and, and this position has to be played. And of course it's much better for black. This is why, you know, black usually wins that position. This is why the statistics of this opening is so attractive. So I'm very curious why Ding Liren didn't go for this, this line. It uh, looks pretty, pretty okay. Uh, he goes for another sharp line, C5. Uh, and white has to be very careful. For now, what is the threat here? Uh, if white plays something slow like h3, this is losing because after knight on c3, knight on c3, look at this, cd4 attacking the knight uh, and after knight on a2, d3, bishop f3 and these two pawns are extremely dangerous. So uh, you can agree or not, but black has a you know, beautiful position and this pawn structure, look at this, it's just a perfection. So c5 was played by Ding Liren and Magnus Carlsen has to be very, very precise here. Uh, he played knight on d5, uh, we have bishop on d5 and now knight on c3. Uh, so what is the idea? The idea is after c takes on d4, which Ding Liren played, knight on d5, uh, and Ding Liren, of course, has to take the knight. So we have e takes on d5. And what is the difference uh, if you compare to the variations I just show you? There is no pawn on e6. And it's this huge difference. Now imagine the rook on e1. Imagine the bishop on h5 attacking here and this pawn being pushed. This looks very, very attractive. Uh, so Magnus played bishop on h5 immediately and now, believe me or not, but Ding Liren has only one way to continue and it's very difficult to spot it. Bishop on e7, this is the only uh, way to play it and after e6, queen on e6, rook on e1, play queen on f6 uh, and this is very complicated. So for now black of course would like to castle uh, but after bishop on g4 it's actually not so easy to castle because the knight is under attack. So uh, if black decide to castle this way, this of course is a disaster and uh, it's, it's losing because of these two bishops uh, now controlling all the squares around the king. So that's not possible. Uh, and also if you try, if you ignore it, if you keep the king in the center and you play something like b4, these pawns look pretty scary. But after bishop on d7, king on d7, bishop on e4, uh, white actually gonna win the exchange and uh, this queen can also come and join the attack after taking the, the rook. Uh, the rook already controls e7 uh, and it's 
much easier to play as white. Uh, black still have some chances because these pawns are very strong. However, uh, it's much better for, for white to continue. However, after bishop on g4, the point is the engine suggests actually to castle on the king side. Uh, and, and this continuation is considered as better for, uh, for black. Believe me or not, but it's better for black. Because after bishop on d7, um, bishop on d6, and after exchanging this bishop, Bishop, uh, white not gonna have the pair of bishops anymore. So, for example, after bishop on d6, queen on d6, bishop on g4, and d3, uh, black has three pawns uh, for for the bishop, and uh, and these pawns are extremely dangerous. And it's everything you know. It's a pretty solid for black, so it's not so difficult to continue the game. Uh, so that was the only option actually to find by Ding Liren. So he had to play bishop on e7 and sacrifice this this knight, or sacrifice the exchange and try uh, his luck with the with the central pawns. That was also possible. But according to the engine, it's um, better for white. However, here Ding Liren actually made a fatal mistake, uh, and he played knight on c5. It's a pretty logical move. It actually controls e6. Uh, twice, so it looks pretty solid. However, Magnus now can take the central pawn and he played immediately queen on d4. And now knight on e6 is not possible because the queen is hanging, that's the first problem. And also e6 is, is the serious threat because, you know, the rook is hanging uh, and the attack on f7 is, you know, on the board. So uh, it looks pretty bad. Bishop on g7 doesn't actually work because after queen on d5 uh, the rook is under attack uh, and after castle connecting the rooks however bishop on f7 if the, the rook takes um, on f7 then another rook is hanging so king on h8 but then a takes on b5 uh, of course it cannot be taken because the rook is attacked twice then, so, so it's not possible. Rook A on D8, kicking the queen, but queen simply, queen on C4, and after A takes on B5, um, queen A2, uh, and now this pawn on A6 is going to be extremely dangerous. So definitely, pair of bishop, um, two extra pawns, uh, that's enough to win by white. So bishop on G7 doesn't really work. Castle, as I said, castle with these bishops, it's, it's, it's just a bad, bad idea. A takes on b5, open the a file, uh, queen on b5, now e6, let's say, uh, with the attack on the rook, so bishop e7, uh, e takes on f7, now this is the problem, this is still a problem. Uh, it's just unplayable. The, the rook can also join the party. It's it's just unplayable. So uh, Ding Liren tried to block the pawn. We have queen on e6 and now bishop on g4, kicking the, the queen. And of course, if the queen is moved, then e6 on the board, the, the, the rook is under attack. Uh, this pawn on f7 is under attack. Rook gonna join the game and, uh, and it's unplayable. So uh, Ding Liren tries to exchange the queens this way uh, and attack the queen. And now if white decide to, to exchange, then actually uh, black would equalize the game. But Magnus found the only move in the position. Queen on d1, still keeping an eye on the, on the bishop as push e6 is a very important even without the threat you know attacking on the on the rook so we have queen on c6 ding liren is forced actually to move and now a takes on b5 queen on b5 and only now e6 so here is the idea uh, f takes on e6 bishop on e6 and now rook on a7 by ding liren he tries to bring the, the rooks uh, to, to help on the 7 rank, however, it's too late. Bishop on d5. Actually, there are many winnings moves, but Magnus just uh, choose to, to clear the pawns in the center. And now look at this. Uh, the king in the center is always in the in the troubles. So uh, Ding Liren grabs the, the rook uh, just, you know, to, to if he some somehow survive, um, then at least he gonna, you know, be up in the material. However, Magnus Carlsen play queen on f3 and in this position Ding Liren resign. Uh, why did he resign? Because this is the main threat. So you have to do something about that. And if you play something like queen on b4, then uh, bishop on c6 is coming anyway. Rook on d7. Uh, and now the simplest way to win, uh, you know, just 
brute force is just take the rook, uh, expose the king in the center. Uh, for example, rook on d1, uh, and after bishop on d6, trying to activate some pieces, it just doesn't work. Queen on f6, uh, rook is under attack now, the bishop is attacked three times, uh, it cannot be defended three times as well, rook on h7, and now simply rook on d6, winning back the material, doesn't really matter, because it's actually the checkmate, because after king on c7, rook on d8, and look at this, this is just... Uh, just bad. It's just forced checkmate. So after king on b7, rook on b8, very nice skewer, which doesn't really matter because after king on a7, uh, queen on d4, and this of course would be a checkmate. So this is why uh, Ding Liren in this position just resign. He cannot defend. He gonna lose the material, or, or if he doesn't want to, then he gonna be checkmated. And I would like to also show you the the final standings after day six. So here we go. Magnus Carlsen, 17 points. He won all his matches. However, once he won in the Armageddon. So uh, if you haven't seen the game against Vasily Vanchuk, um, then you have in the top right corner now the bubble and also. Jan Pomniashi. I haven't uh, showed any games of Jan and he has 16 points. He won all his matches as well uh, to Armageddon. So this is why he has 16 points. And I think these two actually guaranteed the, the their spots for the final four uh, because only four players are going to advance to the semi-finals. Then we have Vladimir Kramnik, 12 points, and Peter Svidler, 11 points, Anish Giri, 11 points as well. So we can say that uh, Viking Magnus Carlsen is, is leading and then we have three and a half Russians, uh, you know, fighting for another three spots as Anish Giri is half Russian. Um, and yeah, Boris Gelfand, seven points, Vasily Vanchuk, six points, Peter Leko, four points, Ding Liren, after one win, um, three points, and Vichy Anan also got three points, but because uh, he advanced to the uh, to the Armageddon games and he lost three of these Armageddon games. This is why he as well has three points. These are the standings after round six. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. Uh, and if you don't want to miss another games uh, commented by me on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one.